A beautiful live shot of Bucolic Gulfstream Park following a no racing Thursday. We're off and running on what promises to be an action-packed Friday afternoon on this June the 12th. We've got 10 races coming down the pike as Jay Primitive of the Racing Forum would quip. It's a shame about the weather. Beautiful day here in Hallandale Beach. Jason Blewett joining you from our third floor clubhouse studios. We are fast. We are firm. And not only is this card buoyed by gigantic, gargantuan, mandatory or guaranteed jackpot Rainbow Six guarantee that starts in the fifth race. We have got the mandatory cash out coming up tomorrow afternoon in the Rainbow Six and our secret weapon who's waiting patiently in our paddock set studios. The one, the only, Ron Nicoletti. You look good in the khaki, my friend. <laughs> What's going on right outside the walking ring? And well, as you mentioned, a beautiful day here in South Florida. In addition to the uh, uh, the uh, Rainbow Six, excuse me, we got the Stronic Five a little later afternoon. We got a beautiful conditions, fast track, firm turf course. I'm ready to roll. Absolutely, so am I. Now, let's do a little housekeeping here at the top. You mentioned the Stronic Five with the $100,000 guarantee. Tomorrow afternoon, it is a mandatory cash out in the jackpot rainbow six we'll estimate the pool maybe conservatively at over five million dollars and that is a 12 race saturday card ronnie really buoyed outside of the pick six situation how do you like the feature with diamond oops and math wizard Oh, that's great. Of course, Math Wizard, a grade one winner, and Diamond Hoops, just one of my favorite horses here. Uh, it turned out we've had a couple of days here where all of a sudden you look at the overnight and you see these fantastic races, and uh, well, that is our uh, feature race, of course, tomorrow afternoon, part of that mandatory Rainbow Six uh, jackpot guarantee. Well, they say it's going to be about $5 million. Yeah, it should be a, a big number for sure. Again, $2.5 million waiting for all of us in that race five launching pad. Ronnie will have a ticket coming up momentarily. We'll dive in here. We're a little late getting on the air. We do apologize about that, but let's get tied on for the uh, first race at about 12.05 Eastern and just a really good table setter when you look at the size of this field. You've got a 12-horse grass contest. I am three deep, seven, eight, and ten. As we get closer to post, clearly Safi's horse is going to come down. The number eight, Keith Quiet, who doesn't look all that quiet on paper. The play, at least as far as I was and am concerned, Ronnie, I built this $27 early pick five ticket on this Fast and Firm Friday, fully well knowing that the five Murray's Bar, the Irish bread in the second race, take a look at some of those very early double will pays going to be a massive favorite in that spot for trainer Wesley Ward. Yeah, Wesley uh, on the turf with these two-year-olds has just been doing a great job, and uh, Mario Pino, they had cooked up for a win the other day, right back here today trying to uh, win the second half of the early double. Quite a bit of back class to be had in this first race, and although with the eight who I picked and keep quiet, Sappy's got three starters today and potentially three favorites on the card coming up a bit later with High Noon Rider and Fuddled. Uh, I don't necessarily love the drop-in for the 12-5, but I'm going to try to sur surmise and speculate that, you know, you can't be too picky with the weather around here this time of the year. Didn't claim this uh, this gelding, this six-year-old gelding, for all that much more than the 12500 he's entered for this afternoon. And I'm going to try him over the old class horse who's got some speed, who I thought would run a lot better than he has been lately, and that is the 10 driven by Thunder. Uh, I did go with the three in here, Sharm El Sheikh, who's debuting locally, dropping to this level today after showing speed and winning two or four races. Uh, that was against, uh, you know, similar competition, was out of town. But the trainer is Murat Sankal. He's got Edgar Zayas. Boys, his horse has been running well on the turf with speed. So I'm going to go with the three here. I hope I get a little bit of a price on the board right now at 8 to 1. And that was the morning line on that horse. Keep quiet for all the reasons you mentioned. 
Uh, yeah, Sharmel Sheik, Ronnie's a top selection, one of a couple of key potential layoff runners. And there, there are basically different tiers, I think, throughout this 12-horse turf race and the uh, layoff crew, in fact, side-by-side uh, -side with uh, Sharmel Sheik and the uh, number four baseline, uh, both sitting at 8-1 to one in the very early wagering. We move on to the second. We move on to discussing why trader Wesley Ward is already a perfect two-for-two two in the two-year-old turf racing here this, this season at Gulfstream Park, why he is going to be heavily favored to win his third consecutive race in a division like this. He's got the five Murray's Bar, the Irish bred with Pino riding. And just again, Ronnie, we're 48 hours removed from a good-looking firster he sent out here uh, by No Name Ever back on Wednesday afternoon. Yeah, Murray's Bar debuts for Wesley. A series of really rapid workouts showing on the Palmetto's turf. Just the same M.O. as the other horses coming into the race. As you mentioned, two for two on the turf course. And uh, Mario uh, rode a real good race the other day. Let the horse, uh, you know, come up, saw another horse come up to him and then pulled away in, in that race. One, I got the horse you got in second I have some interest in, and it's Gabriella Sunshine, who's stretching out the five-eighths of a mile and debuting on the turf. So I wanted to see how David Fox did with two-year-olds going from dirt to turf in sprints. He's 5 for 24, 21%, 50% in the money, and he's got that positive return investment. I think that's a logical horse in here. This one takes that jump forward. I don't know if it can beat Murray's bar, but certainly, as you think, can be on the exact ticket. I think that horse will run well. I mean, it's clearly a race despite having some numbers to it. It's not like a five-horse field. In fact, you had 12 enter and only one scratch of the one CPA genius who was going to be a big bomb on the rail. I think it's all predicated, obviously, in and behind uh, Wesley's horse, the five Murray's bar. But, da I mean, Dave Dave Fox is just a, a consummate professional, and, and we've said for a long time he might just be the best second-out trainer in all of South Florida. Here's the third as we continue on. We're back on the main with this three-and-up Philly Amer two-lifetime uh, claiming race. This will go as the opening dirt affair on today's program. And I, I just had a hard time with this race, Ronnie, if I'm being candid, because nobody – is in particularly good form, and I think that complicates things. But in the case of the two Trans Mississippi, uh, this uh, this Phillies four might be lackluster over her last two or three starts, but she's got a, a key variable this afternoon, and you saw it too. She's in for the 6250. Yeah, drop it to that level today. Shipped in to, to the Monica Magui barn and finished at the not a little trouble. Clipped heels early in that race. Paco in the saddle. We got the same exact superfector up there. So uh, you know, you just. Got Lux Diamond in second, another song and dance in third. Uh, eh, this is one of those wide open races. If you're putting an early pick five ticket together, maybe you go deeper in this race, especially if you like the single like Jason did, the five horse in race two. Well, we opened up this Friday edition of Gulfstream Park today with that pan shot camera. A uh, few stories above the finish line and blue sky and sun for as far as the eye can see. Very few notable defections or scratches on today's card. Perhaps the biggest is housed in race number four as we venture back to the turf course at a mile and a 16th. We lost a big player here in my top pick, in fact, originally in the number three, Jeeker Joe. Now, with him out, I think they're going to bet this thing like a two-horse race, more or less. I'm not saying it's a two-horse race, but there is certainly an argument on paper that the five smell of roses and the number nine hard count are going to take more money than anybody else, and you and I are going for a cold 5-9 exact and 5-9-6 try. Why don't we backtrack quickly to smell of roses last start against a better field? I pulled this race, not that he ran fantastic in this spot. I just wanted people to be aware that if you're betting this horse off a bit of a, a troubled trip last time out, just be a little careful. I know race watching is pretty subjective, but this did not look like a situation where with that mild, steady, and deep stretch, there was ever a point Smell of Roses was going to get it done in his most recent start. And I think the connections probably saw and, and feel the same, Ronnie, because this horse drops from, from 20 down to 12.5. Yeah, it seems to get caught at the wire in all those races against tougher, so the drop looks good for a trainer. Elizabeth Dobles, you're talking about the nine. Hard count now in the Robert Falcone Jr. barn. This gelding drops to this level. Followed that open length $20,000 maiden victory. Uh, had that trouble starting ninth. It was a way back in February. So we'll see how this uh, gelding runs. Here's the thing I like about this horse. Look at the workout pattern. Robert has this horse firing some bullets in the morning. So 5-9 and the 6 Bahamian Park for me now in Joe Orsino's barn. And right, that horse is going to take some play too. They really make up probably on paper 90 
95% of the race, and we'll see how the six, adding him into the mix, sprinkling uh, a little Bahamian Park, how he runs uh, first time going out for trainer Joe Orsino off the uh, Kimmel operation. Let's move on to uh, race number five this afternoon. After we take a little breather here on this edition of Gulfstream Today, we're back after this quick timeout. Hey everybody, 28 minutes on the clock, minutes to post clock here at Gulfstream, Fast and Firm Friday. It's Jason and it's Ronnie in our respective studios. Ronnie holding down the fort downstairs. I am upstairs, uh, just a few yards away from the Flamingo Room. We hope to meet, though, Ronnie, around the money room a bit later <laughs> on after the 10th race today. What are you doing in the big Rainbow Six guarantee? 4860, I tried this theory the other day with one single three in every other race. I got a single today with the four probably Grace, who I think is the logical one for Larry Ravelli. Victor Lebron will be in the saddle, three deep in there. I think I got the logical three in this fifth race with 10 miles high, Irish Paul and Silver Maker. You see the progression as it goes down. The whole day is probably Grace, and boy, I know I need it. Not probably. Definitely need the four in race number seven. Yeah, that horse coming in out of a, a nice victory recently. Uh, we'll, we'll talk more this afternoon and really dive into that seventh race field. Uh, that horse's last out win and trip reminded me of sort of the old school uh, Jerry Bailey rail pass where everybody shifted off the rail and probably Grace just was sitting the pocket came on through. I really had some flashbacks of watching a Jerry ride the turf course all those years, both here at Gulfstream and up in New York. Uh, I am all inside for this fifth race, Ronnie, as we start the rainbow uh, Rainbow Six at about 205 Eastern, uh, preferring in this twenty to eighteen thousand dollar maiden claimer the rail horse and the one Irish Paul and the two ten miles high, who to me just both quite simply on paper landed in a great spot. Yeah, we have our exact a flip flop here. Ten miles high drops a notch in the maiden scale, shipped down from Tampa, made that four wide bid for the lead, finished fourth against twenty five maidens. It's Kathleen, it's Edgar, and Irish Paul on the inside for Louis Roussel. I think those are the logical two in there. Absolutely. As we uh, hit that half mile pole, we're rounding the far turn, five down, five to go. And my Friday late pick five, a three, six, seven opening leg, a launching pad, if you will, centered upon the number three lucky to be in America. I used a couple in the seventh race and the four probably Grace, who's Ronnie's single. I do think the eight tipsy again is going to run well and a horse that may have been a little bias compromised in deep stretch last time out on a much talked about, at least as far as coming out of my mouth, a program here over a sloppy track back on May the 10th. I used a pair of runners in the uh, eighth race. Uh, the number five high noon rider, I think, is going to be a massive, massively short, uh, short price in there, a big favorite. I'm thinking the three grand journey, though, can make a race of it. Um, and uh, and I like the two classiest horses, in my humble opinion, in that in that eighth race on the turf. Using three in the uh, ninth this afternoon, that race gave me a bit of a hard time. And again, built this play around uh uh, just waiting for Fuddle to run back off such a, an auspicious debut where she did just about everything right but win. And uh, just texting with Safi not all that long ago, maybe a half hour ago, he uh, told me Fuddle's training well and he's looking forward to running her. Now, we don't have Safi in this upcoming uh, sixth race, but what we do have, Ronnie, is a horse who I picked in the three lucky to be in America whose recent form is just solid. And this is the kind of field running in a restricted $8,000 claimer I just had a tougher time getting cute with horses that maybe haven't been all that sharp of late, and I put a lot of stock on a horse who's just been hitting hard every time he goes out from the starting gate. 
Yeah, I, I rode my Nihilus strictly to want to beat him, and I did try and do it with the horse that ran behind him, actually, last time out. And here's why. Awesome Action is a candidate, I believe, for rebound performance at this level. He followed that front-running victory against those two lifetime foes. Then he chases uh, the winner last time out and fades to fifth against this level of competition. That was on that sealed, sloppy track. I think this horse could rebound. Lucky to be in America. has got to be on your ticket. I just flip-flopped them two around myself and, and used Kingsville in third for Liz Doble with Hector Berrios in the saddle. Yeah, your horse has speed. That's yeah. that's what scares me about awesome action. I think that is a real nice attribute to have in this race where he either makes the lead outright or he's he's tracking in the catbird seat off the four Lord Adair is going to be a big price in that spot for trader Bob Hess Jr. On to the seventh we go. Three-year-old Phillies on the dirt. We have got a, a cast led by a last out winner that I had uh, talked about or at least referenced this uh, Philly by congrats. Her last start here in victory and a blowout win back on May the 8th. Had a great trip in that race, but that just underscores, I think, looking at her two romps here lately, Ronnie, at Gulfstream, just how in the zone she is currently for trainer Larry Ravelli. And she, that was against older horses. Today, she's facing the straight three-year-old, so I just thought that was like a, a key. I mean, this time of the year, uh, horses, uh, uh, you know, three-year-olds are facing older horses. It's not as strong as it may have been in April or something like that. It may so, but I just thought it was the logical one. That's why I singled there. And, and Victor LeBron certainly knows how to handle his horse going for the hat trick this afternoon. Napa rules in second for me, and you mentioned Tipsy again. Certainly has a chance to be on the ticket. Absolutely. That's the other. You've got probably Grace here, and then that other key subset in looking at this race, the narrative, it's that that nose deciding rematch between Napa Rules and the eight Tipsy again off a very sloppy track race and rough weather day back on May the 10th. I prefer Tipsy again. Ronnie giving the slight nod to the six Napa Rules and we'll move on to race number eight where the run that High Noon Rider has been on for Safi, this horse is going to cast a pretty imposing, I think, shadow over the field this afternoon, and here he is last time out, and I remember thinking, although strictly the horse to beat along with Delarna in this race, I remember commenting pre-race that I felt as though a mile may have been a hair short for this horse, even though he won out of two back. But this was just another powerful effort, Ronnie, with an eight-year-old who, in a way, has really found the fountain of youth here. And Safi's got him just going great guns as he looks for his third consecutive victory. You, you know, those against those 20 starter optional claims, you say, well, is this horse here classy enough? Then you look at the last figure this horse got in that race, a 96 buyer. So they were moving in that race in there. I had originally liked the eight horse from Todd Pletcher, who scratched out of the race. And I moved up with the three who you have on top of your ticket, Grand Journey, who stretched Stretching out to the mile in the 16th, returned from the layoff, finished that late closing of fourth against 50 starter allowance. I got to relook this race. We just got the scratch uh, right before we came on the air. Does the pace change in here? We have to sort of figure that out. Grand journey, high new rider for me. Yeah, I think the fourth Thunder Ride with no Al Mashriq, who was going to take some money and a horse you liked, I didn't. I'm a little bummed he scratched, but that probably puts the ball in the court of the fourth Thunder Ride, who I think, at least to me, is a little tough to make wiring this field, but it absolutely alters the pace. I'm thinking Grand Journey showed enough last time out. Is it is it a case where he can recapture that form of a year ago? Who knows? But he, I thought he ran well enough in that, that tough Dr. Edgar race here in late April to warrant a mild upset chance against the five high noon rider, who, again, is just strictly the horse to beat. We're on the uh, main track. In fact, our final dirt race is coming up on this uh, Fast and Firm Friday in the uh, ninth. It's a quick one here, a three-year-old fifty to $40,000 sprint over the dirt. I see quite a bit of speed in this race, and that led me in the – in the direction, Ronnie, of uh, the six Gemo, who I think in looking at the one fast loaded on the rail, the number two money ride, the number four Inter Miami, I think, and maybe a little Ricky Ticky Taffy, who's not a rocket ship speed, but he likes to lay up close. I think they're going to be flying, and I was hoping Gemo might be in a race where turning back, he'd get out sprinted a little bit and just cut and wear everybody down. You might be right. Yeah, this is the race. You can see our selections differ a little bit in here because this is the run I had fits with. It. I couldn't figure out Very the pace race. in here. I just couldn't figure it out. Ended up with Ricky Ticky Taffy. He's turning back to three quarters uh, after returning from the freshening. Stalked the pace last time. Faded to finish six. But that was in the six and a half furlong $75,000 raw stakes. Oscar Gonzalez, Edgar Zayas handling. Uh, you know, the return to the claiming ranks. That's what sold me. Fast loaded. A little bit of a long shot in there with the eight uh, Meyer 15 
going one of two from Mark Gassi. Mm-hmm. I think this horse might be able to grab a share at a price. That's what also throws, the locals are good, but also throwing a potential monkey wrench, you know, trying to analyze this thing. The two two new faces who are both down in class for Mark. Your eight horse, who you think will run well, and yeah. Meyer at a price, and the three, Goldmine Cat, who was trying stakes company last season as a, a two-year-old up at Woodbine. So two interesting players for that barn uh, as we uh, we await. Well, I guess it's going to be a, a little longer than just this summer with Mark getting inducted to the Hall of Fame. I think the ceremony has been moved back to 2021, but a, a belated congratulations to a class act and great ambassador of the game. And uh, Mark is in a spot where he's running two in the uh, ninth. He comes back in the uh, last race with the five Meadow Beauty, who's going to be a, a, a pretty big price. Yet the barn also has the nine Humor Me Dixie. So Mark is in with a, a bit of a fighting chance against a horse who is going to be a clear favorite in the number 12 fuddled as I had noted as my late pick five single you watch this race back uh, in the run-up to the Florida Derby here back towards the uh, tail end of March this uh, Irish bred filly by invisible spirit did everything perfectly yet the only thing she didn't do Ronnie was win this race losing to an even money favorite in first wave who in the green and white silks got the jump on her off the quarter pole yeah, I mean, she ran exceptionally well in, in that race. She's got to deal with the outside post today. She is absolutely the one to beat in the finale. And if you're not aware, this is part of the Stronic Five. So uh, a lot of people might be thinking of singling this. I know you asked me before we went on the air a little earlier, hey, what about that post position? I said, I don't know. So that's the only, if you're going to you pay devil's advocate, maybe the post can ha- hurt this horse. But I don't see anybody else that really scares me in a race. I use she's just quality to seven. And as you mentioned, uh, Meadow Beauty from Mark Cassie with Hector Berrios getting some nice mounts. Uh, Hector is over the last few weeks. And we've got Christian Torres riding my potential upsetter. If there is a fly in the ointment, I think the switch back to the turf for the nine humor me Dixie is, is really going to help her. She's just not a dirt horse. And that race, don't mistake Ellis Park for July 21st last summer at just being a run-of-the-mill race somewhere out in Kentucky. Uh, Abscon won that race for Eddie Keneally, and she had some quality uh, last season and ran well here over the winter time. I think the nine humor me Dixie is dangerous as we welcome Christian Torres, Ronnie. It's a journeyman today. No more apprentice allowance. No more apprentice allowance. We was joking because of the break with the COVID and everything. He seems to have been the apprentice for 14 years. I was joking about that. So now he's a journeyman. We'll see how he does. I'm sure he'll do well. Very smart, well-spoken, prepared, and thoughtful, just like the man upstairs. That's a perfect segue. Pete's coming up with those Friday scratches and changes.